My name is Guy Payne, and I'm the Executive Director of the Sustainable Energy Outreach Network. And we are a uh, 501c3 nonprofit right here in Brattleboro, primarily servicing Wyndham County, but also we reach into uh, Cheshire County and down to Franklin and sometimes beyond. And really what we've done is we've created a community of builders, architects, uh, those working in construction, as well as facility managers of like commercial and, and schools, all for the point of promoting their own professional and ongoing development. Not just through training, but we also have an opportunity for folks to, to come, share their failures as well as their success. And there's nothing like sharing some failure to help with a little bit of learning. Uh, and what happens is that we have now this community of builders and architects in, our, in this area who are really extraordinary and collaborative at the same time. You may think of people because they're privately, working privately, that they're competitive, but that's not what we have accomplished at this point. We also, in addition to the work that we are doing, um, we have a sustainable home tour that goes on every year. In uh, This year it'll be mid-September, uh, and it's an opportunity for the public to uh, visit homes, speak with the builders, not from a sales point of view, but simply from a high performance level of construction. And it can be new homes, it can be re renovations, or it can also be, well, I'm on a 10-year plan, you know, so, which many of us are in the midst of. Uh, so we'll be doing that. And then down the road, you should be hearing very soon uh, a program that we are rolling out for what we're calling high performance builders. And these are builders, uh, entry level workers, because we can't find carpenters. And these are entry level positions where people now come away with an understanding of what we call building science, which is the science of how air, heat, and moisture move through a building, which are also here for that tonight. Uh, move through a building, move through products, or move through arrangements of products, and it's a very complicated thing. We're no longer building sheds. 10 years ago, some carpenters have said, if you know how to build a shed, you know how to build a house. That doesn't work anymore. We also uh, make this opportunity for you as the general public to present programs um, to the public on all aspects of um, high performance homes, sustainability, and we've been doing this now for a couple of years. Sometimes we hold it at the Marlboro Grad Center, and this time we're holding it here, um, center to town and, and all. So today, um, Teresa Spear, who is our program manager, is back there, and you may have met her. Um, hello. <laughs> she uh, looked at us and said, you know, or lo looked at me and said, you know, guy, there's an awful lot of people that said, I don't know where to begin. Who are the good builders? How do I get started? And how do I maintain the momentum to move forward with wet renovations and wet weatherization? And so because of that, uh, we decided, well, let's look at Neighbor Works, the Heat Squad. Let's look at SEVCA and look at ways of financing it from the SECU, who have a number of financial products and por portfolios. And so we realize that a lot of people are stuck because it looks and feels so complicated. Liam's over there going, yes. <laughs> so this is an opportunity for people to listen to the presentations uh, and ask questions at the end. We prefer, if you could, to wait t to the end and then Liam and everyone can, um, and, and Corey and all can um, answer the qu questions and John is somewhere. There he is, okay. But what I'd like to do um, is also, I'd like to introduce, can the people who are members of CEON raise their hand? So you have, have an idea. So these are some of the high, these are some of the high performance builders and uh, con construction folks who really worry about not just energy efficiency, not just renewable energy, but comfort, water and vapor management, um, durability, um, air quality, safety, 
and purchasing and using and building through lo local products. So these are the folks that worry about that, and they build according to that. For now, though, I'd like to turn it over and get it over because you don't want to hear from me too much longer. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Liam Fagan and Corey Trimmer of NeighborWorks. Um, they have a whole pr presentation for you. Uh, and they'll be speaking on, so what do we mean by building science? What is an energy audit? Uh, and all other aspects having to do with the wet weatherization piece. So Liam, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, so again, my name is Liam Fagan. Um, I work with NeighborWorks Heat Squad um, from August 2016 through then um, August 2017. I was the AmeriCorps member serving with the Heat Squad. Um, left for an internship down in DC, um, but I'm back working with NeighborWorks for a couple weeks to assist um, with outreach for the Heat Squad, um, both for our normal outreach methods as well as a couple of um, couple of grants that we're working on. Um, but Corey Trimmer here is one of our star energy auditors. Um, so he's been all around the state, um, done over a thousand energy audits on folks' homes with Heat Squad. So to start off, just a quick slide about NeighborWorks itself. Um, NeighborWorks is a nonprofit housing organization located up in West Rutland. Um, we call ourselves a one-stop shop for um, homeowners. So we provide five different services. We have two realtors on staff. Um, we have a lending department to give folks um, access to low interest energy loans, as well as down payment assistance loans and home repair loans. Um, we have the um, Financial Counseling and Home Buyer Education Center. Um, we also have our home repair program um, to assist um, you know, low-income folks as well as seniors um, for any sort of home repairs that they need, as well as in the Heat Squad, the Energy Auditing Service. So NeighborWorks of Western Vermont is part of the national nonprofit NeighborWorks America. So the Heat Squad has been around since 2010. Um, providing support for um, businesses and homeowners of any income. Uh, we offer reduced cost energy audits, um, same day energy audit reports, so you'll get the energy audit right at the end of um, the scheduled audit. Um, we offer objective advice as well as then um, help with finding contractors in your local area. So we're currently available in eight counties around the state but are, um, have plans to expand statewide soon. And so far we've completed over 4,600 audits as well as a bit more than 1,500 projects. Um, and our partners include Efficiency Vermont, um, local utilities, local contractors, um, as well as um, uh, you know, folks who are invested in um, energy efficiency like Sion as well as um, local energy committees. Just a brief overview of what we're going to be talking about today. I already have gone over it a little bit, uh, but we're going to discuss some common energy myths and realities and talk about how energy escapes from building, talk about energy audits itself, um, you know, the um, building science and what an energy audit includes, um, as well as then talk about your advantages of um, efficiency improvements um, and go over the steps to save money and make your home more comfortable as well as healthier. To start off, I have a couple quick questions for you. Um, you can give me a thumbs up or thumbs down whether you think that this is a myth or reality. Um, so anybody here um, believe or heard from friends or family members that um, you know, if you have an inefficient home, the first thing you want to do is replace the windows in your home. Anybody think that before? So that's actually false. Um, what you're going to want to do is address um, the entire building shell with air sealing and insulation. Um, so one of the things that Corey's going to go over with you is some of the most common improvements that we'll do to homes. Um, and in reality, you know, focusing on having proper insulation and air sealing is going to give you a much quicker payback period um, and help you save more energy than doing something very expensive like replacing all the windows in your homes. Um, just a quick thing here. So a lot of the drafts that you might feel around windows um, during winter actually come from a convection current when the warm air within the room hits the cold glass, causes the air to cool down and sink, creating a current within the room. So it's not necessarily, you know, again, even if you have old windows that they need to be replaced, um, it might be that current that you're feeling. So question number two, 
Um, anybody heard or believed before um, that if, the, if you have large ice dams as well as then a lack of snow on your roof, that that means you need to get your entire roof replaced? Anybody heard that before? I don't think I saw anybody nodding, so that's a good sign. <laughs> As you can probably tell, again, it's busted. Um, you know, a lack, of, a lack of snow on the roof um, and having ice dams on your home really points to the fact that you are lacking proper insulation and air sealing in your attic. Because um, then the warm air, um, you know, the air that's being warmed by your heating system is going up through your house and escaping through your roof, warming your roof, causing the snow to melt, where then it refreezes um, off the side of your home in the form of icicles. Number three. Um, you know, you might be noticing a pattern here again, whether or not this is true. Um, so anybody think that, you know, heating with wood or with pellets is already so cheap that you essentially can't really save that much energy, you're not going to make a huge difference. Again, that's busted. Um, efficiency, efficiency improvements are going to, um, you know, reduce any sort of fuel usage. Um, and our average wood customer is saving between two to three quarts of wood per year. Um, which, you know, depending on where you get your wood, might not save you a huge amount of money, but it will save you the effort of having to, um, you know, stock all that wood as well as storing it. Um, you know, especially for. Go ahead. Yeah, but I'm a chimney sweep. That's not necessarily good for my business. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> good for my parents who are, you know, getting up in the age and not necessarily wanting to lift that much wood. And last one, I promise. Um, so this one, you know, we have a recently built home. I don't need any sort of um, efficiency improvements. Anybody think that or may have heard that before? Once again, busted. Um, we actually, this is a true story that we had a client who had a home that was built in 2013, um, who they were experiencing 42 air changes per day. And Corey's gonna go over um, in a bit what exactly that means, air changes. Um, but they were experiencing 42 air changes in a day. Per day or per hour? Per day. Um, per day. Yes. Um, so your recommendation is about eight. Um, average Vermont home is 24. So you know we have a relatively old housing stock that's pretty inefficient. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of homeowners, um, I know myself included, my house is about 30 air changes per day, or was before I just had the improvements made. So not a, not a myth buster, but another question. Um, Take a quick poll of what you think uses the most energy in your home. Anybody believe that it's hot water heating? I see one. Anybody believe that it's lighting and appliances? Okay, anybody believe that it's heating? Okay, seems like a lot of folks. Anybody believe that it's air conditioning? Okay, and last one, anybody believe it's refrigeration? So your refrigerator and freezer. So it actually is heating. Um, so heating is taking up about 58% of um, the average Vermont homeowner's energy use overall in the year. So a heat squad customer, um, you know, saves an average of um, 250 to 300 gallons um, of heating fuel annually. And at this point, I'm going to pass uh, the mic on over to our energy auditor, Corey, so he can talk about, um, you know, building science as well as then what is involved in an energy audit. How many people here know what an energy audit is or have had an energy audit done? Just raise your hand. So we're maybe half and half know and, and don't know. So I'll just go through some of the basics of, of what I do. So when I come into a home, one of the first things I'm going to do is, is address some air leaks and understand how leaky the shell of your home is. Um, and so I'm going to use this door that I've got set up over here. This is what we call a blower door with a large fan in the bottom. Um, and when I have the exterior of the shell completely tight, meaning exterior doors, windows, closed, tight, interior doors open, um, I can turn that fan on and I've got a, a digital readout that tells me how much CFM or how much air is moving through that fan at any given time. Um, and at a certain pressure, I then take that measurement and I can do a calculation based upon the volume of your house, how leaky your home is. And that's where we can come up with air changes per day. Um, the average Energy Star rated home is about eight air changes a day. Um, I did a 1914 house just down the road earlier this afternoon, and she was at 30.5 air changes a day. So 30 times a day, this homeowner has to heat the volume of her house. It's escaped out the top and is replaced in the bottom by cold air because homes are just chimneys. We know what chimneys do. You warm them up, heat escapes out the top and has to be replaced at the bottom. So, that's what we want to do, um, is address air leakage first. 
Um, so I can use an infrared camera many times if it's, uh, if the temperatures are right. Sometimes during the spring and summer it gets a little tricky to get good infrared imaging. Um, infrared cameras can see temperature, not light. Um, so I can see cold air being pulled into a home when I have this fan blowing air out. Um, and it allows me to see whether walls are insulated, uninsulated, are there funny chases down interior walls. Um, it allows me to see a lot of things that you just can't see with just a walkthrough. Um, so this is, kind of talks a lot about um, where typical locations are for heat to escape. Um, recess lights are really bad um, contributors for air leakage into an attic space. Attic hatches are usually really bad. Um, I tell people attic hatches should be treated like any other exterior door. They should be airtight and insulated. Same thing with basement doors. It's just negatively pressurized. Um, typical areas where air comes in is around windows and basements, uh, the band joists. Um, you'll find that most of your air infiltration and the exfiltration is the top and the bottom. In the middle, there's this kind of, um, there's this middle plane where there's not much air coming in or out, depending on whether there's wind. But there's a lot, that's why we call it building science. There's a lot of science that goes into um, understanding a home. Um, so what I'm trying to do is reduce the stack effect or how much heat is escaping and is being replaced by the cold air. So with an energy audit, um, we do energy audits typically in about three to four hours. Um, so I'm going to come in, I'm going to do this blower door test, um, do a complete visual inspection. I'm going to take a bunch of pictures, interior and exterior. Um, with temperature dependent, I'm going to do some infrared. Um, we're going to check out your heating system for um, safety, spillage, is it, is it operating safely, um, efficiency as well. Um, we're also going to look for health and safety issues. Are there propane leaks coming from various appliances or your stoves. Um, I'm going to look for asbestos and vermiculite, which are potentially hazardous um, contaminants that can be found in the house. Um, and we do this year round. It's summer, winter. You know, I'm, I can't do infrared during the summer when the temperatures are just right. So I just, it takes me longer because I have to go feel and check for drafts all over the place. But it can happen year round. Um, and then I usually say I have about an hour and a half of data collection and um, testing. And then I have about an hour and a half of number crunching, report writing. Um, I do it all right at the kitchen table. Matter of fact, this audit I was on this afternoon, I was in a lawn chair on a cardboard box because they just moved in. So I do it wherever I can do it. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out, but I'd say 95% of the time, I'm going over the report with the homeowner before I leave, answering questions, walking them down into the basement, talking about the recommendations as needed. Um, and so uh, that's really unique. When I started this in 09, I would turn reports around in a day, maybe two days, because I have to go write it up and come back and do a bunch of stuff. But we have some really um, comprehensive and um, really cool energy modeling software, which allows us to turn it around very quickly. Um, so this is an example of what an energy report might look like with what you stand to save um, in dollars, in gallons. You know, There's a lot of different ways to show it. Um, but this is kind of what it, it typically looks like. And, and I try to, to prioritize the recommendations of where can you get the biggest bang for your buck? Um, oftentimes it's replacing your lights. Get those incandescent light bulbs out and put in LEDs. You might spend 50 bucks and save 100 the first year. Um, and then it's maybe doing some air sealing. Um, so a lot of times what I do in that first hour when I'm walking through a home is I'm asking a lot of questions and doing a lot of listening because it doesn't matter if I save you a ton of energy if you're still cold in the bedroom, which is the reason why you called me. So I want to understand what you hope to get out of the audit and then give that solution to you. And then maybe you can get some other benefits like reduce moisture in your home or maybe your house isn't going to be so dry and it's going to be less problematic for your asthma. There are these other things that are beneficial from a health and safety standpoint in a home that comes with uh, weatherization and um, uh, doing energy savings. So, I'm trying to provide you what you hope to get out of it and then maybe a little bit of bonus information too. So not only do you save on your heating and that's a comfort thing and it's a financial thing, um, but you also are going to be cooler during the summer. Most people forget that that insulation is also keeping that hot air from driving down into your second floor during the summer. So you can actually be more comfortable year round. Um, and I found that as a huge benefit after the work I did on my house. Those really hot days, I lock my house down, pull the blinds, and you know it's 95 degrees outside, but I've seen the temperature raise three degrees on my second floor. And my wife thinks I'm a total nerd, but I'm like, it's paying off right now. <laughs> We're totally comfortable. 
Um, so we also will address health and safety issues, like I said. Um, uh, there's always, we want to, there's certain things you have to get taken care of in an attic before any work is done, like um, knob and tube wiring or asbestos in a basement we have to be very careful of. Um, and then there's also the increased advantage of having um, uh, the value of your home be increased because you've done this work, you've showed that you care, you've shown that you've had a good qualified contractor come in, and you have the before and after bills usually to say, here buyer of the home, I used to spend, you know, uh, use a thousand gallons of oil, and now I'm down to 750 or 700. Um, and it's more durable, there's less moisture issues going on. Um, and also in the report, I also mention um, what you can get back from Efficiency Vermont. They offer cash rebates to homeowners for doing air sealing and insulation upgrades. So it gets fairly complicated um, how they do their matrix, but that's what we're here to try to explain it and just be the bottom line. If you do this, this, and have this outcome, you'll get this in a cash rebate. Um, and then the benefit too is we submit all that paperwork to Efficiency Vermont, so you don't have to do anything. We just get a signature on an enrollment form, we send it on to them, you get a check in the mail in about three to six weeks. Yeah, <laughs> it's really interesting. Uh, one of the other benefits that comes with health and safety is, is rodents and pests. I was, early on, I had a guy who said, you know, I need you to come spray foam my basement. Can you give me a price? And I came in and I said, boy, you're going to save a ton of energy. You're not going to have as much cold air coming in. And he said, is it going to stop the mice from coming in my house? And my wife ever going to see another mouse? And I said, well, I'm 99% sure that's not going to happen. He goes, whatever it costs, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of rodent and pest um, infiltration um, dealt with from doing a good um, air sealing insulation in many places in a home. Um, also, reduced noise is always something that's, that's um, surprising for many people. High performance homes, those guys who are building new around here, um, I often hear people who live in a high performance home saying, there's just like a stillness and a calmness that comes with uh, an energy efficient home. Um, and new construction can really take you there. But you'll, you'll notice before and after um, many weatherization jobs that you're gonna have reduced noise. Um, clearly eliminating mold and moisture is a good thing. Um, you know, we're also addressing as a house gets tighter, carbon monoxide becomes a potential problem. If you have failing propane ovens or uh, backdrafting furnaces, those sort of things becomes a, a bigger concern because a leaky home with carbon monoxide is not that big of a problem, but a tight home with carbon monoxide issues can be. So that's why we always come and test everything afterwards to make sure that we didn't create a more <coughs> dangerous environment than we had before we started. Um, and that's where we talk here at the bottom about being too tight. Um, it does happen on occasion that the contractor does a killer job and the house is super tight. And it's below that eight air changes, which is recommended. Um, and then we can then talk about getting something, a simple solution like getting bath fans on a timer. Maybe they're running a half hour every four hours just to help eliminate some of that stale air and help suck in some fresh air from the outside. But at this point, at least you're in control of the leakiness of your home and the house is in, in control of you. So yeah, it's really interesting. There's a big push recently about healthy homes. Uh, efficient homes are healthy homes. So yeah, we're working, um, I don't know if we're gonna talk about this later, but we, we're working with Rutland Regional Medical Center up in Rutland um, to do some case studies of asthma patients. And you can see some of the statistics about fewer asthma um, and COPD um, and mental health issues that come with um, an efficient home. So we've partnered with them and they've actually reached out to some of their worst patients who come to the ER and say, hey, here is X number of dollars. Can, let's weatherize this home and let's reduce moisture. Let's reduce drafts. And can we reduce the um, emergency room visits from these patients? Um, so we're doing some kind of interesting things with them because if insurance companies can see that they can reduce those emergency room visits, it might be worth having um, addressing the home and not necessarily not necessarily the, uh, the patient themselves. So one of the things that we do after the audit is done and somebody is really interested in doing a project is who do we turn to? Like, who's a good contractor? How many people here has called a contractor and they never called you back for something? Like, everybody. Um, so what we do is we have a network of good contractors that we work with who say they're gonna call you back and if they don't, if they're busy and you expected a better timeline, give me a call, I'm happy to reach out to them. Um, but we have good contractors um, who will try to get out there within a week to two weeks to come give you an estimate, um, provide an estimate a week after that, 
Um, and, and so these guys are out there um, just kind of keeping the ball rolling, because too many times I've had projects where I tried to start them, and then you know, a contractor never called me back, and I started just doing it myself, and you know, it it's, can be a hassle, but we want to try to help take down the barriers of getting the work completed um, and get you into a safer, healthier home. So yeah, these are, um, this is a, a typical, I mean, how many people have seen this Vermont basement? Um, exposed dirt floor, inefficient propane water heater. Um, this water heater at the top, um, it's just relying on the atmospheric pressure and the stack effect to take the flue gases out. Um, but when we come in and treat this space afterwards, you'll see there's a heavy duty vapor barrier on the bottom, locking out moisture from the dirt. They use spray foam around all the columns to um, lock it out. This particular house had lots of um, moisture in it, so they actually had a perimeter drain that went to a sump pump, and now they've got an efficient um, heat pump water heater set on the side, which is also doing a little bit of dehumidification while it's making hot water. So what is a comprehensive energy path? Um, step one, you know, reducing the energy um, through your thermal efficiency. I always tell people, you know, they kind of like the windows, they want to replace their heating system to get a more efficient heating system. But if you can't hold on to the heat that you're making, you're just going to be more efficiently heating the neighborhood. Um, so you want to start with, with uh, tightening up the shell best you can. Um, then you can think about potentially putting in more renewable or efficient um, heating systems at that point. Um, and if you do go maybe electric, maybe you want to do some on-site solar. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to get there, and not everybody wants to go you know, the whole enchilada. Um, so what I say when I come in is, you know, what do you hope to get out of me? I've had some people say, I want to be net zero. What is it going to take? I don't care what it costs. OK, well, let's figure out what it's going to take. And then I get some people say, I only have $3,000, but I want to, you know, what's my biggest bang for my buck? Or what can I do myself? I help a lot of DIY people and say, you know, go down to this hardware supply, get this product, here's an image of how to install it. So there's a lot of different ways to get to that path, and um, we hope to just be an unbiased person to help get you there. Um, one of the things that we offer at NeighborWorks is our statewide energy loan. Um, you're going to hear from the SECU, who has a green loan as well. Um, so at NeighborWorks, um, you know, we provide this loan for um, folks of all incomes across the state of Vermont. Um, the funds can be used for um, any sorts of weatherization and building shell upgrades, um, but can also include um, you know, your efficient uh, heating systems, renewables, heat pumps, um, Tesla power walls. Um, so anything kind of relating to efficiency um, is likely going to be covered under, um, under this, uh, uh, this loan. And um, it does have on-bill repayment from Green Mountain Power, if that's something you like to do. Um, and the um, energy loan from NeighborWorks is a 4.99% interest rate. Uh, so the final step in your sort of comprehensive path, um, when the work is complete, Corey's going to come back out to your home. Um, I don't know if he had touched on the test out. I don't believe you did. Um, but with the test out, Corey's going to come back to your house once the work has been done to check to make sure all the work was done to a high quality, make sure you know all of the odds and ends were tied up as well as then to perform a second blower door test. And what that does is it gives us an understanding of how, um, you know, what the percentage of um, reduction in airflow you were able to achieve mm -hmm. was, which is then what dictates the amount that you will receive from Efficiency Vermont um, in rebates. Um, so the Efficiency Vermont rebates are set up um, you can kind of think about them in two different brackets. On the one hand, they're going to look at air sealing and ask, you know, what was your initial blower door test and what was the test out blower door test so we can see how effective was the air sealing you had put in your home. And then the other half of the rebates are going to ask how much insulation did you install in your home? Because um, Efficiency Vermont pays out a specific amount that I can't quite remember right now um, of um, per square foot of installed new insulation. Um, and so again, you know, Corey will then um, enter all of that data into the online Efficiency Vermont system, not something you need to worry about. And then in a couple of weeks, you'll get that check in the mail from Efficiency Vermont. And I was right, that was only the last couple of slides. So thank you, everybody, and we can, yeah. Can back this slide and talk about the reduction of the bottom line? 
<laughs> oh, sure, yes. So normally our energy audits um, from the Heat Squad are $150, um, but if any of the folks here tonight are interested um, in energy audits, you can come see me and Corey afterwards. Um, we're doing a special for um, folks who attended the presentation tonight. Um, where the energy audit will only be $100. Um, and so what I'll do at the end is I can take anybody's um, contact information, and then we'll have the current AmeriCorps member um, who assists with all of our scheduling reach out. But for now, we can go ahead and um, take any questions that anybody has. Just to clarify, the, the whole three-hour audit is only $100 to come in and find all the problems. Yes. Wow. Can I just touch that point? If you could so, repeat the question. Yeah, so she wanted just to make sure that the three-hour audit was covered with the $100 audit cost, and it, it is. What we found was, you know, it takes a lot of time to come in and do an energy audit. It's three, four, you know, I gotta drive there, I've got three hours on site, I gotta drive back. When I started out doing these, we were charging four or $500 because that's what my time was worth. But we found that there weren't many people doing energy audits because they were afraid, I don't want to spend $500 to find out I have to replace my windows. Well, if you don't know that you, where your real opportunities are, you're not going to do anything. So that's where the heat squad started was let's have some reduced upfront costs just to educate people. Once you have the education, then you can make good choices that make sense for you, however you want that done. And so I want to just, you know, tell you, you can save on replacing your water heater. I can help you find a good plumber. You might need good insulation and air sealing. I'll help you find a good contractor. Somebody might need a new heating system. I can get an HVAC person out. You know, if you bring an oil, got your oil supplier in, he's going to have an oil solution to your problem. So it's about figuring out where your problems are and help you get down the road, whatever makes sense. So that's why we did these low cost energy audits up front, just to educate Vermonters so they can make good choices. This guy. Uh, Corey, um, part of the energy audit, do you do an inspection on the outside of the house in terms of sort of bulk water and where might some water problems be? Is, is that part of the energy audit? It, it is. Um, we always recommend you get bulk water away from the home and around the home first. You don't want to try to deal with it from the inside. Um, yeah, a lot of times I will, and, and some of that comes from the interior inspection to see, you know, is there a water marks inside where water's clearly coming in? Understanding, is it a seasonal problem? Is it a constant problem? So yeah, we're addressing moisture from the exterior, from the roof, um, from siding. Um, yeah, and drainage and grading as well. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Where do you get the funding to offer reduced services like this? So we get funding from a, a couple different sources, um, but we, we get funding from NeighborWorks of America, um, and we get various um, grants that we apply for. Um, you know, we uh, get a small fee when we, all contractors get a small fee when they submit um, uh, projects to Efficiency Vermont. Um, we do work with local contractors that we work with to get a fee from them from a lead fee. Um, so yeah, we're just, it's, you know, we're just trying to make a sustainable model. And because we're a nonprofit and we have AmeriCorps volunteers, we try to run as lean and as tight as we can. Um, so, you know, I, I work from my office, so I don't have to have an office somewhere. So I work from home when I'm not out on the road. Yes, sir. If you uh, have uh, asbestos or you know, slash vermiculite in your home, mm -hmm. do you lay out a sort of a different scenario because that has to be addressed first or not? Yeah, so uh, vermiculite was mined or has been mined in the same mines as some asbestos. So we have to treat all vermiculite, which is an insulation product, as it might contain asbestos. Oftentimes we'll see asbestos in a basement. That will um, cause us to not do a depressurized blower door, so I won't be blowing air out of your house because I could potentially pull asbestos through your home. So I can do one of two things. I can either not do a blower door or I can turn the blower door around and do a pressurized blower door. So that's a different way of kind of testing the home. Um, if you, you either have to have it remediated professionally um, to have work done in that space, or maybe we say, yeah, you have vermiculite in your attic, no contractor can really touch it. Let's focus on the basement and everywhere else. Um, like most as asbestos, asbestos abatement, it's a pretty costly thing. Um, so some people aren't ready to attack it. Some people are, didn't know it was there and are willing to deal with it. So, you know, and same thing with knob and tube, like that knob and tube has to go before anybody's gonna work in your attic. So we do lay that out as you have to do this before this is done. So we try to address all that. 
Does that answer your question? Yeah, partly. And efficiency Vermont um, incentives, do they apply to doing that type of work? Or? No, they don't. They only apply towards air sealing and install ins installation of insulation. They don't offer anything for the remediation of that health and safety stuff. Um, I've been pushing for a long time. Um, I'm sure when, when our friends from Sefka will come up, they have similar issues where they come into vermiculite and you're like, I kind of can't do anything, I can't help you. And so how we can try to get, I'm sorry? We, we remediate. Yeah, you do, oh, awesome. Because I've seen some other agencies who are just like, I'm sorry, but we can't do anything for you. And it's a real tough thing because it's expensive stuff. I mean, it's, it's tricky. Yes, sir. So I'm also a nerd about all this stuff like you. Yep. And I'm not familiar with air changes per day. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm air changes per hour at 50 yep. pascals. So how does that translate? You just multiply it by 24. So like, like when I come in and, and I come up with an air change, so 0.35 air changes an hour is kind of our building tightness limit. You multiply that times 24 and you get eight air changes per day. It just helps, I found that these numbers help people kind of uh, homeowners, the average homeowner can kind of wrap their brain around it a little bit easier than saying 0.35 ACH 50. Yep. Per day it, it equals three About ACH 50? Yeah, point, yeah. And, is, and three is what you're going for or? Uh, it depends on the house because we can't always get there. I don't want to go too deep in, with air reduction, right? It kind of depends. I, I don't want to tell people I want to take them uh, too tight in their home if I know that we're only going to do a basement and a band joist and it's only going to get them a certain amount, right? But yeah, I'm happy to nerd out on you later if you want to go even further. Yes, sir. Uh, recess lighting, is that fairly easy to take care of? You just do part of your ceiling or uh, is it harder than that? Oftentimes that recess light, um, as long as it's in an attic flat, you deal with it from above. Um, a lot of times, some contractors will construct their own kind of covers that go over top. Sometimes you can buy pre-made covers that go over top these, um, and then they get spray foamed into place. So you're actually putting an airtight kind of cap over top of a recessed light so that it no longer can escape up into your attic, but just can get contained within this cover. Right. And then that way it protects the recessed light from any, say, cellulose that might get put in afterwards. But if you can't get at that space, then you got more of a problem. You, you can. There's a couple of different ways to go about it. And I usually say, you know, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat, but whatever contractor I come in will give you the best way that they see fit to go about it. I, I try not to, to get too specific with my recommendations. I try to say, you need to reduce airflow by X, Y, or Z. And then I'm going to recommend a good contractor is going to come in and do that work. And I'll let them determine what that actual work scope will be, because that might affect something else that they're going to do in the house. All right. I think that's it. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. Next, I just want to introduce uh, Teresa Spear, and she's going to be speaking for Efficiency Ver Vermont. We, uh, their rep representative couldn't come, come down, so Teresa is going to be taking Steve Spatz's place. So. Thanks. I'm just going to do a very brief, like, five-minute introduction to Efficiency Vermont. They have a great website, so you can go there and get a ton more information. Um, how many of you have heard of Efficiency Vermont? Okay, so most of you are familiar with it. So I won't go into it in too much depth, but they are uh, a nonprofit. The Public Utility Commission oversees it and has funding for it. And their purpose is really just to help um, people in Vermont to reduce their energy consumption. And they also are the ones that offer all the rebates and the incentives that um, Heat Squad was just talking about. So I'm gonna briefly go through their website. You can see the uh, URL up in the right corner. They have a pretty easy to use website and one of the things you might be interested in is looking what they offer for rebates. And you can see from the list it's pretty extensive and that's where you would um, go to. And I will say that for some of these, uh, Heat Squad, if you're working with them, will take care of them for you because they work closely with Efficiency Vermont. But otherwise, you can do it directly with them. And you can also call them with any questions that you have and they'd be happy to advise you. 
So for example, some of the, um, I just looked up this afternoon, what I saw was uh, boilers and furnaces, high efficiency up to $250. Heat pumps, um, similar to what you see up there, is $800 up to $800 rebate. They have uh, rebates for smart thermostats, heat pump water heaters up to 500, ventilation systems 110, and, um, and the Home Energy Star performance up to 2,500, as Corey had mentioned. So you can go here and look those up. And then they list their services that they have, and you can look through this. They have listings for all kinds of services and information. A short section on products and technology, so they explain the different types of lighting. As you can see, it's a good way to kind of educate yourself and get some background on this. They go through heating and cooling options, you know, what's a heat pump water heater, what's a, um, a heat pump, cold climate heat pump, and all of that. So you can see a lot of information. They have a section on tips and tools. It's really good for anything you want to do yourself. They have videos there that walk you through a lot of the processes. So there's more if you scroll down. And then lastly, there's a find a contractor section. And a lot of this um, Heat Squad is one stop shopping. So if you do go with Heat Squad, they'll help you with a lot of this. But I just wanted you to also know that it is available here. You can look up contractors who are certified by Efficiency Vermont to do the test in and test out and the work. Um, that's needed in order to get the incentives. You have to have someone certified through them, unless you go through the Heat Squad, who is also a certified provider. And that's it. Any questions? Okay. Okay, uh, John Heislip from SEFCO will talk about the, the opportunities that SEFCO affords everybody. As well as I just wanted to let folks know, uh, Chad Farnham of <laughs> Farnham's Cellulose is all, also here as one of the weatherization contractors. <laughs> okay, John. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm from Southeastern Vermont Community Action. Uh, it is a nonprofit that was founded in 1965. We serve Wyndham and Windsor County. Um, it is a, uh, we're, we're, we have about 115 employees. We administer dozens of grants. Uh, we work with people with crisis fuel. Um, we have uh, a complete family services department. Um, we run thrift stores, uh, numerous other uh, programs. Weatherization is about a $1.7 million program that we invest into the com community every year. Um, it is, I'm glad that the guys from Heat Squad spoke first because we do a lot of the same things that they do, except our services are all at no cost. There are no loans, there are no incentives, it's at no cost. Uh, this is all income-based, which is in our pamphlet, uh, which I put up there, as well as some applications and um, some other information. So oftentimes with weatherization, and especially with nonprofits, the perception is that those people receive lesser value services um, because it is government funded. You know, it's, people think government cheese and they kind of think the same way in terms of weatherization and other programs. Uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, we do, like I said, everything that Heat Squad does. Um, we also are a little bit more aggressive about health and safety issues. So we test every combustion appliance in the house. So if you have a propane hot water heater, your furnace, whatever it is, uh, if there is a problem with it, we fix it or we replace it at no cost. Uh, we work with EVT, so that's actually, uh, we have someone from EVT that works in our office. They go in first. 
Uh, again, that's all no cost. It's part of our process. So if somebody has electric heat, they have exorbitant heating bills. Uh, often they have medical equipment, electric heat, that sort of thing. They have crazy high electric bills. Um, Victor, who is our EVT person, will install electric heat pump heaters at no cost. Um, so when we say at no cost, these things uh, are all funded by you and me through the fuel tax in the state and also a DOE grant. Um, and that means that we have to prove that there's an investment return on every single dollar we spend. Uh, we're held extremely accountable. And we uh, use a com computer modeling program, which I'm not sure which one you guys use, but we use Hancock. Um, we service about 140 to 160 clients a year. Um, as far as vermiculite, if we encounter vermiculite, we will hire a contractor to, to come in and abate that. If we can work around it, we will uh, keep it in place and seal it. If we can't, we will completely remove it at no cost. Um, somebody asked about can light covers. Before I forget, uh, the easiest way to seal those is with a LED retrofit kit. That's about 10 bucks a light. And then insulate over it. Um, somebody else was asking about air changes. So because we are government funded, we um, use a, a metric called ASHRAE. It's a, a countrywide standard, the ASHRAE standard. That's how we monitor if a, health ha if a, a home has good air. Um, because if you make a house too tight, the combustion appliances want a backdraft. As soon as you turn on your dryer, as soon as you turn on your range over your kitchen, stove, um, your appliances, your combustion appliances will backdraft if you don't have enough fresh air in the house. So we adjust the number of air changes uh, probably to a much lesser extent than Heat Squad um, in terms of the tightness limit because that's what we have to do um, according to DOE and, and the state of Vermont. And we, in almost every case, we manage that through, partially through a smart switch timer on, on bath fans. So we do a lot of the same stuff that Heat Squad does. We just have a little bit different standards in terms of how we have to do things. Um, the other, as far as healthy homes, um, auditors at, the diff there are five agencies that do this program in the state. It's about $10 million statewide. Uh, there was just another grant that came down for about $5 million that's gonna open up uh, weatherization to people that are at higher income levels. That should come into effect next year. The people that, that, that work in the programs that, that we have are some of the highest trained building science professionals in the country. Uh, in order to become an energy efficiency auditor at a weatherization program in the state, you have to have 2,000 hours of on-the-job training, and then you have to pass your 48-hour building science courses, which are shell and envelope, um, and then you have to continually recertify. Um, we also participate in a pilot program for Healthy Homes Practitioners, which is through uh, Building Professional Institute. That's, that's what most building science people have their certifications with, is with Building Professionals Institute. Uh, there are maybe 10 or 12 people in the state that are certified as Healthy Home Practitioners. Uh, three of them are at SEVCA. Um, and that's where we get into things like asthma, what causes it, you know, the difference between causation and correlation and different things in the home. Um, as far as plumbing leaks, that sort of thing, we fix those. 
Um, if you have a mountain sliding down into your house, we might not be able to abate that. But if you have a plumbing leak, if you have a minor roof leak, um, those sorts of things are, are what we do just as the course of our program. Um, when it gets too big, when your house needs the whole roof replaced, we might partner with somebody like Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust, and that's when there may be a, a low interest loan or something like that through those guys. But the services that we provide are at no cost. When someone calls Sevka for anything, we have a one-touch referral program. So when you get into the weatherization program and the energy auditor is sitting down with you and going through what he found that day when he audited your home, things like, um, you know, if you qualify for the 25% uh, cut on your electric bill from GMP, we'll enroll you. If you qualify for fuel assistance, we'll enroll you. If you have a drug or alcohol pro problem, we will try to refer you to a pro professional. So um, we're very focused on weatherization, but we work with lots of other folks in the community. Um, we've partnered with Farnham before on apartment buildings to have foam sprayed. They do fantastic work. We like working with those guys. Uh, we, we partner with every fuel vendor in the state, in the area, um, contractors. Uh, we try to maintain a good relationship with everybody in the community because we're all partners, including Heat Squad. They do great work. Um, so I just want to tell everybody a little bit about the program. I know that some of you may or may not qualify. If you don't, you probably have a neighbor that qualifies. Um, I would encourage you to take an application or some information, regardless of whether you qualify, uh, so that if you do have a neighbor or a friend, we would love to hear from them. We would love to help them. Any questions? Could you give us some broad um, eligibility levels, just so people have an idea of maybe who should or shouldn't fill out an application? In the brochure. So if you're a family of four, uh, the limit is $55,440. Uh, household, income. household income. So a couple, uh, it would be 44371 Five people. 59,877. So it's purely dependent on income. Um, there are factors that are involved in how soon you might be weatherized. We have something called a WAP rank, which is the weatherization program ranking. If you're disabled, if you're a veteran, um, if you have other disabled people in the home, those things generate a higher ranking. Um, but we get to everybody eventually. So it's just we try to serve the people that are most in need first while still getting to everybody. Do you find that you uh, have more applicants than you can serve in a year? Is it competitive yes. to get accepted? Okay. Yes. We have about 400 people uh, apply every year. Again, we can do between 140 and 170 homes a year. So uh, I, I'm actually hiring three more crew guys. Uh, so we're, you know, we're trying to increase that, but we have to stay within the grant. You know, we can't, I would love to go do 400 homes in Wyndham and Windsor County every year, but we get X amount of dollars and we have to stay within that. Do you have the infrastructure in place to receive like volunteer help from the community? There are a ton of great, great outfits like Cover. I don't know if anybody's heard of Cover. There are volunteer uh, organizations out there that will do things like go and build your new ramp if you need, have, need wheelchair access, or they will put what we call Tizols. They'll put plastic, removable plastic on your windows or put a roof over a mobile home. So there are agencies that will do that, Cover being one of my favorites. Is Cover active in Wyndham? Um, they are based out of Springfield. 
least last time I checked, well, the last time I talked to, I can't remember her name, but I did talk to a woman in Springfield. <laughs> we can sometimes. It really depends. So uh, we do quite a bit of work on apartment buildings, and uh, half, so if it's a four-unit apartment building, half of the renters have to qualify for our income guidelines. Um, if it's a DOE job, it's more like three of them have to qualify, but it's usually half. So uh, um, a, in terms of housing stock, multi-units, uh, especially where we live, are not always in great shape. And um, sometimes those people are some of the most at risk. So we, we do every, everything we can to work with them. Do you have a for-profit range? So yes, we used to. Um, we're concentrating on the nonprofit aspect of it right now. Uh, that's not to say that we might not. It was called the best program. Yeah, that's not to say that we wouldn't have that in the future, but we won't until at least July. All right, thank you very much for your time. Okay, the last person of the night is Samantha Wilhelm. She is the branch manager in Brattleboro for the Vermont State Employee Credit Union, otherwise known as VSECU. Um, and VSECU has been a tremendous sponsor of SEON. Uh, so it's always great whenever we have the presentations, um, VSECU is always part of, of them. So. So anyway, thank you. I'm uh, Samantha Wilhelm, and I'm the manager at VSECU on Canal Street here in town. It's a new role for me. Um, I have a banking experience, but not one with a credit union. <clears throat> and I haven't yet forayed into all of our lending options. So if I appear to be stumbling at some point, it is because I am. And I apologize, but I can get you the answers you need if I don't have them. VSECU uh, was founded in 1946 and chartered in 1947. We have nine branches in the state and an operations center in Waterbury, and we have 175 employees. And our mission is to inspire a movement to bring people together to empower the possibilities for greater financial, environmental, and social prosperity. In 2016, we um, built a big solar array in Guilford that some of you may know, um, with Sovereign Solar. And we're purchasing net metering credits, which now offsets our power bill. And three of our branches, of our nine branches, are LEED certified and um, fully green operations. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is a picture of our team. Um, the president of our bank is the second from the left. And I don't know who the gentleman in the middle is. The woman is our um, green loan program director. And the fellow in the foreground, I don't know the name of either, but he's a VSECU um, employee. But this is our uh, program, our, our solar array out in Guilford. Um, so as you know, credit unions are member owned. We're not for profit. We're a financial cooperative. We currently have over 62,000 members. We are um, available for use to bank with us for anyone who lives or works in the state of Vermont or is a member of NESI, the Northeast Sustainable Energy Association. Um, and we focus, our focus is on heat, feeding people, financial literacy, shelter, and making the environment a better place for all of us. So we have a number of lending, we have a number of different green loans, which is what we're really proud of being able to offer to our members. Um, we have a heat saver loan, which is very similar to what the Heat Squad does. We also work with Efficiency Vermont on that loan. Um, we have energy improvement loans. We have the um, tax credit loans, 20-year energy improvement, discounted energy improvement. And we do a lot with green vehicles, green bikes. And we have green loans for businesses as well. Our green energy loan, has we have rates from five years at 4.9% to 15 years at 5.9%. So they're Pretty competitive rate-wise. Maximum loan amount for that loan is 40000 And you can see the things that are eligible for that loan, your windows and doors, appliances, weatherization, et cetera. Um, and um, we can also include solar in this loan for up to $40,000. So these other loans, the investment tax credit loan, 
is a $60,000 max loan, and you get the 30% Fed credit um, to reduce your payments. And if you apply the credit to the 15-month reduced payment period in full, it will keep your payment static for the period of the loan. So you take that money back from the Fed and put it right onto the loan, and, and it keeps your payments static. And we try to keep those payments at the same as or less than what your energy, your electric bill is already, so that it really is an, a zero um, cost to you in the long run. The 20-year um, loan is for large solar or high efficiency, high efficiency heating systems, and it's discounted with fixed rates at about 6.4% at 20 years. Again, that's a maximum of um, $60,000 borrowing. And then our discounted energy improvement loan has a max loan to value of 80%. We do need estimates in order to um, work with you on this loan from your contractor or a sales quote. And those range from five to 15 years and the rates are from 2.74 to 4.5. So those are some pretty affordable home loans. Um, then our heat saver program, as I mentioned, is very similar to what the heat squad does. Again, it's based on your income, and our rates are shown there. Um, so if you're below the 59.3, it's a 0.99% rate for five years, or 2.9 um, for five to 15. I have information about this, if anyone's interested, that has um, all of this detail on it. You do have to have your authorized contractor um, fill out the back of it. Um, it can be done online. All of our loans can be applied for online, or they can be applied for in any one of our branches, our Brattleboro branches on Canal Street. And if anyone has any more questions, we'd be really happy to talk with you about those opportunities. Um, so here is sort of the wrap up, but that's our website, vsccu.com. Um, and we, if you apply online, you get your contractor or vendor to get you the right project or purchase, and then you choose which loan bis fits you best, complete your purchase and file for incentives and rebates, and enjoy your savings and tell your friends. So um, that's kind of it for me. Um, we also have green mortgages. I don't do anything in the mortgage lending department, so I really can't answer any questions at all on that. But I do have some um, brochures here that explain our green loan program in pretty good detail. And it gives you all the rates on um, what we have to offer and what's included in what we have to offer. And the same with the heat, we, the heat, uh, the heat loan. But we also have a fuel buying program for people. And you can um, enroll into this program. And we have discounted uh, heating fuel purchases um, agreed with different vendors in the area. So if you do heat with oil, um, we have some discounts available for that as well. So anybody questions? Yes. The fuel program is strictly oil? Yes. Yeah, it is. Well, propane too, but oh, okay. yeah, 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 propane and oil, yeah. So I'm sure a lot of your vendors are at our dual fuel propane. Yeah, it's um, Barrows. I'm not familiar with them. Um, Barrows and Fisher, Bourne Energy, Energy Co-op of Vermont, Irving Oil, Suburban Propane, and Trono Fuels. I think Trono's in the Burlington area. But I think the other ones are in southern Vermont. Yeah. Anybody else? Man, I filled you with so much information. You don't know what to say, huh? Well, thank you for the opportunity. And again, I have information up here, and if you have any more questions, I'd be happy to talk with you. Yes, let me sum up. Yes, thank you. Some of the presenters are still here. Um, are there any other follow-up questions that you may have? Or if you've thought of something after they had finished? Uh, thank you, John, Corey, Liam. Uh, Get just out or Jill, Jill, Jill uh, see John and S Samantha. Thank you very much. This was a good good night. Okay, over and done. Mm -hmm.